Good evening, everybody. It's System Chalk again with, I believe, the 38th episode of the Ike Upscribe Apostle Obstinate playthrough. So we have had a little bit of a breakthrough uh, with the, uh, I believe it was the Rite of the Watchman Sorrow. We'll confirm that through the work slot. But what this is going to do is give us some access to the alien gods uh, that are <laughs> sort of indicated inside of the trailer. And essentially what we're going to be able to do now is instead of potentially sacrifice some of our followers for, um, you know, for uh, missions like trying to get rid of the tentative evidence or uh, to try and overcome some of the obstacles inside of the uh, inside of the expeditions, we're going to be able to summon things which uh, we can sort of use. Um, probably the best use of the summons would be for things like the tentative evidence. Um, in this case, they're a little bit more expendable. They'll still generate notoriety, but of course, we'll have the freedom of using our heart followers to be able to deal with that. So the hope is, we've already been going through a few expeditions, but uh, the hope is that we'll be able to continue pushing forward on these expeditions uh, as we sort of free up our, uh, you know, our, our followers to do, do more important duties. I should also mention I don't like doing too many things that are outside of the uh, context of the game, but I do have a very big process on my computer running in the background, and so I apologize if there's any uh, problems with the quality. If you do notice any, uh, please leave a comment uh, letting me know what the problem is so I can diagnose it. But that shouldn't be something, um, you know, it might be a couple of, of episodes, um, but that should be something that resolves itself within the next week or so. All right. So we are currently uh, we're currently doing unskilled labor. I believe my biggest reason for doing that would be um, uh, it would be because I wanted to get the vitality to get rid of this affliction, which is also why I'm keeping the dream slot open. We're currently not talking with anyone now. This might be because I don't particularly fear the evidence at the moment. I may want to reconsider that. Um, we're doing okay with Savorous Blood, so I'm probably going to have to find some use for the Delightful Blood at some point. Probably in a paint. well, no, not in a painting, but maybe in a ritual. And uh, I don't want to get fired at Glover and Glover yet. Um, so probably the only remaining verbs that I want to take care- or the only remaining verb that I want to take care of is the study verb. So let's see if we can find something to read. Six letters on necessity, Deoris, which is not yet translated and Kitling Ripe and Moldy Warp's Grave and other stories. Also, why is the formula Vigilant up here? I suspect probably because I'm out of space. I really need to get these expeditions done so I can free up my, uh, my space. All right, we don't have Frisian for the Concursum Diaries and we do not yet have Aramaic. There's a couple of ways that I can potentially get those, but for now, I'm going to, I'm going to keep with some fairly vanilla, um, vanilla behavior. So let's start by reading, well actually let's translate. So we'll translate Deoris. Lock the study door, the work begins. And uh, as far as the expedition is concerned, oh we're buying uh, books at, um, at Moreland so that's not as big of a problem. All right, I found something noteworthy. On the white, Solomon Husher writes perhaps allegorically of winter and its long, slow, doomed romance with the sun. The epigraph is Sunset at Noon. This is a book that we does not require translation. So I suppose the question for me now would be, do I want to, um, do I want to keep buying books at Moreland's? I do have enough money to be able to go on another expedition. So which is worth more to me? We're almost certainly going to be finished with the Weary Detective by the time this mission is done. So let's take a shot. So Lockwood Fen. The reeking murk of the Fenlands is ripe with furtive life. Taciturn locals still watch the sacred places of, a small, of small and secret gods, the ones that can answer prayers. Okay, so we'll toss two funds into it. We are going to be losing one of the funds for uh, for rent, but we are also going to be gaining it in 10 seconds. So I figure that's a little bit of a wash. Um, and let's add... I'm not actually going to add the Avid Disciple, but I want to get a reading on the expedition. Out in the Mudlands, somewhere, we are certain, is a shrine bedecked with precious oddments. If the locals try to kill us, we are probably heading in the right direction. My apologies for the timer. All right. Um, so again, this implies that there might be might be problem with the locals. Um, 
I think for lack of better options, I'm going to bring Pope Clifton and I will bring Saliba, who is not yet a Cyprian. So let's start with that and we'll see if we can find some better, better alternatives as time goes by. Took me a little while to get started, but we should be good to go. Okay, so trembling in the air, the sun flickers like a shadow, dreams ripple behind the surface of mirrors. I must be careful not to drift from the waking world. This is one reason I didn't know that fascination was coming up, but I wasn't quite sure what I might be running into. So I wanted to make sure, when I was uh, doing books, that was one of the reasons why I did translation. Although, in fairness, I don't think any of these are likely to generate fascination. They say I can do the job of two, uh, any two others together. It's not true. Not quite. All right, so now we can take our affliction and combine that with vitality. All I need now is time. And as far as working is concerned, so we've got 48 seconds before we're done our uh, position at Glover and Glover. Now, summoning is going to be a bit of a challenge as far as work is concerned, but I'll, I, I have some ideas about how we'll manage that. What I want to do right now is take a look at this right that we got. Oh no, the Watchman's Sorrow we already had. It was the right of the seas fasting, I believe. So the sacrifice in this case is lore, which I'm not quite ready to give up yet. Okay, so the right of the seas fasting, the right calls on the witch and sister to close the gap between what is and what might be. The adept pours or hurls an offering into water, preferably, but not essentially, the sea. So we've got the invocation. Uh, in this case, it's lore, which we keep. We have an instrument, which right now we don't have all that much. Um, but, uh, I mean, for things like the... for winter, this will be particularly helpful. Uh, the offering in this case... Oh, hang on. So I do have to give up an ingredient. Is that the Grave of the Crucible Soul, then? This may have changed. Uh, okay, so I do need to, uh, an ingredient. That's maybe a little bit less appealing. However, the Delightful Blood, I believe, is something that I might be able to use. So we do have some options there. And then, all right, so this isn't the one that uses Influence. So what about the right of the Crucible Soul, then? Yeah, well, as probably <laughs> predicted. Uh, all right. So that might be something that's come into one of the patches. Um, I think I can still manage the right of the Seas Fasting, but it's actually not quite the same. It's not the same ritual that I was thinking of. Um, again, I might just be misremembering, or it could be that there have been some adjustments to the game since I played it last. So, one way or the other, I'm not ready to do a summoning yet. But let's keep going to Glover and Glover so we can maintain the job. I think my next goal will be to get that commission from Jannings. Or rather, do that commission for Jannings. I've given my agents the opportunity to serve. Let us hope it ends well for us all. So we do have the Watchers, mortals, perhaps even ordinary mortals, but quite a number of them. They can be fought, seduced, or deceived. We also have treacherous grounds, uh, pits and quags, and sudden tumbles. The earth here cannot be trusted. We need strong hands or clear sight, forge or lantern. So we actually, this one, I did a fairly good job of mapping the um, the aspects to the... Um, to the uh, description. So we'll bring Cat Caro in for uh, for assistance. This is assuming the treacherous ground comes up first, but if it doesn't, we can always bring Rhaenyra in. And as far as our friend JC is concerned, we don't know what they're doing yet. Should also probably come up with a decision in terms of what I'm going to do with the Delightful Blood, but... Still no information. This is the last of the mystique, so as long as I don't generate anything within the next minute, I don't need to fear the expedition. I have prepared the text for study, an occasionally coherent catalog of the secret gods. This is the English translation of a volume dealing with the powers of the wood. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to read Deoris and uh, Ketling Ripe first. The main reason for this is that I've got contentment, which is going to come up. I don't have a romantic interest. So, and part of my justification for that is I'm sick. Why would I want to, you know, 
tie myself to someone knowing knowing that I'm not long for this world. So we'll uh, do Deoris first, and then we'll do Kitling Ripe. And the idea here is that if we do get something that'll generate Dread, we might be able to offset it with uh, the Contentment, although the timings may not fully work out there. So this volume deals mostly with the Hours of the Wood, the Moth, the Black Flax, the Ring Yu, among others. All right, the Watchman will clear our sight so that we can almost certainly pass without error. In this case, we'll bring in Rhaenyra. Mirrors are calm, the sun is steady, the glory recedes. I'm sane if that means anything. No fascination drives your visions, it's over for now. So we've got Tristan Interludes, if I have a particular friend, now is the time to renew our connection. And coming up, we have a season of despair. So um, again, if we if we wind up in if we do wind up in that situation, we should have some contentment to help me out. The clerks file out in silent, I am free for now. Some days are better than others. Sometimes the sky is nothing like a filthy sheet. Sometimes the river runs clear. So there's our contentment. Let's take a minute here and uh, do Janning's commission. So he would like... The Count will pay for information of interest. This time he'd like a very substantial work on the practices of Edge. So let's take our commission. Take the Colonel's names. We actually could get by with the... Uh, the others, but... And it's a double reason, I think? Yeah. This may be useful in a commission. Sick room grows close and stale. It is time to get up. So, my next question now is, do I want to do anything with the dream slot? Uh, I do technically have 59 more seconds on contentment, so I'm either committing to not doing anything with the contentment at all, uh, or I need to, you know, I need to, I need to generate whatever will generate the dread. So I can't let the delightful blood go. I can't, kind of can't let that go to waste because that's going to take 63 seconds, whereas I'm only going to have the contentment for 59 seconds. And I might have been able to extend its life by painting it, but that's no longer possible. Um, so I guess I should probably work out what do I want to do with the delightful blood. I could. Um, I could dump it into another uh, another sort of induction. Yeah, we'll bring a hanger on in. I think that's probably the best the best course. Oops, sorry. This one is ready. Usefully malleable, but they'll probably never amount to much. The idea here is that I recruit two hangers on, so I had uh, two to begin with, then upgrading them, that's four, and then I've got two other pawns here, so that's potentially six, but there is something special about this pawn, um, which I won't mention right now, but uh, is, is a factor in, in some of these decisions. We're mud spattered and thorn scratched, but we've made it through. So Kat Caro and Pope Clifton have seen us through as long as Rhaenyra and Saliba take care of the watchers we should be in good shape we still don't know what the long is about to do to us you'll not forget the savor i have given them this one is loyal but lacks initiative so we'll put him with the winter group ah an unveiled angle at a certain angle my thoughts reflect the mantis light our enemy seeks to learn that angle so fortunately i do not have fascination we didn't really get any warning about what was going to be uh, happening so tristan sort of failed us there oh hang on no it's latin it's lee also not tristan um but talking wise uh so jennings we're getting the commission from madame bichet we need to get a commission for so she's seeking pieces for the notorious kerishim review Okay, so weary detective's not finding anything, but again, we need to wait the minute. Here is what she needs. A very substantial commission on the Grail. Madame Alipe Bichet is seeking suitable articles for the Karishim Review. She wants something very substantial and unflinching on the Red Grail. You'll need matching lore for this fragment of at least level 6 to complete the commission. And let's talk to Dr. Adim. Doctor would like help with his research. Our enemy has searched the Mansus Halls for a glint of my reflected thoughts and found nothing. So, that's a welcome development. The glory is a question, and the moth always answers yes. The black flax's answer is no, and that is always its answer. So we got the barber's warning for that. Nothing too special about it. Um, you know, this is a old, old lore, but 
I'll stick it up here because we haven't quite worked out our uh, our balances here. We did get erudition, but we don't really do that much with it. If I wanted, I could take the study verb and uh, combine it into a lesson learned. But the question is, what would that really gain me? Instead, I could use that time to uh, to read up on uh, other you know other sources. So there is a small risk here of kitling ripe. Uh, it could generate old unhappy far off things, and we don't really have an answer to it. But I did say I was going to do it early on, so let's uh, let's carry on with it. Uh, on the white is more likely to just purely generate dread. Uh, obviously, that's winter. So I figured of the you know six letters of necessity is no risk uh, as far as I can tell. Um, moth and winter are a little bit more likely. I mean, obviously, once you get to certain higher levels, you're always running a risk because you're seeing the really intense things um, that are not meant for mortal eyes to see. But uh, in this case here, um, I, I sort of feel that the, the overall risks, if I didn't know what these books did already, sort of forges at the bottom, moth is in the middle, and winter is the most direct source of dread, which means that I need to kind of mind my manners for about 70 seconds. Anyways, Kettling Ripe and Moldy Warp's Grave and Other Stories, a lusciously illustrated tome of loosely connected children's stories collected by one N.K. Field. Few of them are remotely suitable for children. The protagonist, a speechless cat thing called Kettling Ripe, performs a series of elaborate rites to rescue members of her extended family, culminating in the resurrection of her other grandmother, Moldy Warp. All right, our expedition plans for the next challenge. It'll consume funds. I can add funds now, or I could send another follower. We won't add any more assistance, and I already dragged the wrong one. Here is what he needs. Dr. Ibn al adim called the Alapine, has offered you a commission. He would like you to provide him with any information you can assemble on the severe mysteries of the Lantern. All right, so Jannings, I need to keep that verb open to hand him his commission in five seconds, and I think I'm going to leave everything else alone. Season of Suspicion is coming up, so that is unlucky. Um, this is gonna this is gonna hurt us when it comes time for the uh, the expedition to conclude. Um, I don't think. Well, this might actually still be hanging around. I do want to keep. I should keep the heart followers on standby. I guess the next question is: Is there anything I want to do with Dream right now? And I suppose. I can try and get slightly better lore. I can't really go through the spider's door, and we don't have any lore to go further. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll try the stag door. In my dreams, I know the path to the stag door through the maze of the bounds. Gearby will let me pass, but the path is always a puzzle. I will need reason. Okay, I finished the manuscript. So I'm not going to... I'm not actually going to activate the commission yet. And this is because it's going to provoke uh, Mystique. I'd much rather have the... I'd much rather have the sort of the season of, uh, of suspicion completely gone before I, uh, before I provoke that. So the scratching of pens, the sourness of dust, the sighing of the younger Glover, the greedy gurgling of the Elder. Come closer, dear ones. We have something special for you. So again, we're already at ten Grail. There's really nothing we more we can do for the uh, really nothing more that we can do against the Watchers. Our spy has returned to us. Our mortal enemy has decided on a course of action. So I will bring Slee back into the into the spying role. When the snake witch killed the stag, Kitling snatched one of its eyes. When the dry witch killed the sow, Kitling stole a cup of its blood. Then she took them to the place Moldywarp lay buried, and she took out her hair, and she began to dance. So this is kind of an interesting one here. So I've, I've not actually thought about what the connections could be, but some of the things, if you've ever wanted to sort of see what are some of the connections that you can make in terms of the descriptions. Um, so snake witch, uh, there are associations with snake and knock. 
Um, we've got the Dry Witch killed the Sow, a uh, cup of blood, so that seems to have a connection with the Grail. Uh, then she took them to the place Moldy Warp lay buried, and she took out her hair, which has a moth association, and began to dance, which has a heart association. So, um, in this case here, we, you know, knock might be related to summoning. Um, then you could say, well, what happens if you get um, Grail, um, Grail Heart, and Moth? I don't actually think it's possible. I think you can only have three uh, combined. But this is kind of an example in terms of some of the ways that if you want to start parsing out some of the lore, you look for common associations. Um, and if the serpent one isn't obvious, uh, we've seen that in the case of uh, we've seen that in the case of some of the earlier expeditions. Whenever we've had to get past the serp uh, serpent, we've sent the knock followers or the yeah the knock followers to deal with it. And then the question is, well, how did I know to send the knock followers? I actually got that from other lore, but I don't remember specifically which lore I made the association with at the time. But that's, you know, if you like puzzling through these sorts of things, just being able to start noticing those combinations. And this is a great example for me where I hadn't really considered those before. If I wanted to pursue that train of thought, I would sort of just maybe take some notes and I would say, okay, well, where do I see these, you know, where do I see these um, items in combination? And maybe I'm reading too much in, in the dance, or maybe there's some alternative than the grail. Uh, that I could be considering, and at that point, I, uh, you know, I, I try and find the the best fit, um, and that's actually where, through a lot of these uh, these books, that's actually where you find the uh, the ways through the Mansus. Although we already started off with, I think, the first three uh, at the beginning of the Apostle playthrough. On closer, uh, here we go. On the wait, Solomon Husher writes, perhaps allegorically, of winter and its long, slow, doomed romance with the sun. The epigraph is sunset at noon. On closer investigation, this work seems to be a theory of aesthetics, or perhaps a set of warnings about the dangers of painting. Now, I do apologize for running over, but I do want to get Lockwood Fen finished. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll go a little bit over, and uh, I will try to be a little more diligent in the future. Uh, now, I would have normally taken the subtle rupture here, but it turns out that I misjudged um, I misjudged what uh, ritual I'd gotten. So let's try the Painted River. And it's not terrible. We got an erudition. Um, I'm ready to improve. The Painted River runs from a great chamber near the White Door, far through the Mansus, to its far edge, where it enters the Painted Delta of Far Cloud. I voyaged half its length last night, with a stern-faced captain beneath a rust-red sail. As the clouds rose before us, the sailors raised a yearning shanty and close-hauled the, uh, sorry, I close hauled the sails to best use the painted wind, and all the while the captain and I discoursed on the secrets of the House of the Sun. Alright, I think I'm gonna head back. I don't really have a whole lot to do other than uh, returning to the stag door. I'm not quite ready to spill blood to uh, enter the, the spider door. The wolf despair prowls elsewhere. No dread empowers this despair. It's over for now. And I do need to worry about sickness soon, so I should start... Actually, it would have been better for me to go through the white door in that case and potentially generate the health. It's a little late to worry about that. Present pleasures will fall will end ill for them. Perhaps they'll think it's worth it. Meanwhile, we can pass. All right, so I've got the rent. Clerks file out in silence. I am free for now. So... Uh, I do face a choice here. I could do one of these commissions, or I could do the um, I could do uh, manual labor. I think in this case I'm going to do the manual labor. It's not great for money, 40 seconds. However, I don't have access to the auction house right now. All right, I'm safe for now. My adversary has not enough evidence to bring a case against me, and they found no new clues. And we do have double weary detectives working on our case. Okay, so now is the time when I am going to have a chat with, uh, let's get Clovet. Significant conversations in a smoky meeting room. What do I need from my follower? And we will take the order of the bloody cup. And the hope here is that over the course of um, the expedition, once the notoriety pops up, we will immediately snatch it up. Um, right, they say I can do the job of two others together. It's not quite true, not quite. That's a vitality and preparation for the illness that's about to befall us. Oh, probably could stand to uh, go to work, though. Usher writes distractedly of his hatred of colors and his yearning for death. He hints at a great work he has envisaged or begun, where the palest of paintings will enthrall the world. He returns again and again to certain compelling phrases, which he claims are the secret words of winter. And 
for that we got the Sexton Secret, which we may not have read before. Certain knowledge, it is said, can be expressed only through the particular quality of, si of a silence. It has been suggested that one can only re- uh, only- sorry, that one can only read such knowledge with one's eyes closed, but only by mischievous commentators. That's actually one of my favorite lines, and I messed up the reading. Six letters on necessities. Warnings and confessions about the cost of the invisible arts addressed to a student uh, by the 17th century magus and reputed immortal Julian Coesley. And of course, as uh, the comments pointed out, we uh, <laughs> those are what JC stands for. Coesley's tone is urgent, as if he suspected the, uh, he might have little time left. Here on a flat rock, inches above the marsh water, is a throne carved of yew wood, ripe with fungus, ornamented with tarnished copper. Ooh. To be continued. Uh, I think this one generates a fascination, so let's try the Ascent of Knives. Nope. Forbidden epic. Uh, but the bitter atmosphere is going to generate despair. Or dread. Witcher passes the clothes, passes the skin, nestles in the veins. I visited the Ascent of Knives last night, that harshest of roads through the house. It has been sacred to the Miniscate and the Sun and Rag since the Intercalate, when the true sun was divided. When I woke, my room was freezing. The chill of it had cracked the window glass. So I gotta keep an eye on that, but we'll make do. Uh, we've got our sickness coming up, and... I suppose the question is, how do I want to spend my time otherwise? Uh, let's go back through the stag door. Oops. Oh dear. Sorry. Um, rape with fungus ornamented with tarnished copper. This is the shrine we seek. All right, and you've waited an additional six minutes. Apple green paint marks the ritual circles on the rock. The remains of the sacrifices past squelch beneath our feet as we search the shrine, and a little hollow in the throne rests an oiled bundle of treasures. So we will take Rhaenyra and Saliba back. We've got our notoriety. Of course, in 11 seconds, that's going to get snatched up. Cat Caro helped out too. There's Pope Clifton. So we got a vital pigment, which we already had. The flayed tantra which we'll have to translate, but we can work with. Winged Doll. Now, this is going to be helpful because we have a ritual which can use uh, instruments. It's level four. Uh, in an attic above a skeleton house, there was a window. Beside the window was a box. In the box, there was a bandage. In the bandage was a twist of clotted hair. In the hair uh, was wound a doll because the window had never been opened. And this icon of St. Agnes. So this is a knock instrument, again, also quite helpful in our summonings. St. Agnes of Bohemia was renowned for her pious dedication to the mortification of the flesh. This icon makes for grisly viewing. And on that note, thank you very much for watching. If you are enjoying the series and have not done so yet, do feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications if you want to know when a new video comes online. And if you do enjoy them, do feel free to like uh, and comment. I do really enjoy reading yours. But uh, until Friday, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.